Hey guys, it's Cal Brock here. I'm a surfer and a filmmaker. Today, I want to talk about five things that I wish I used from a, a training intervention point of view for surfing in order to get better when I was younger and not have to go through the arduous process of trying to get better as an adult. A lot of the stuff that we talk about here is also covered and acts as fundamental philosophies of the curriculum found at the surfersroadmap.com. It's my online surfing university. Check it out in the link in the description below. Definitely do something on that. Coach the Bronx tonight. When I grew up, I had zero access to good surf coaching. I learned how most people did through doing it and watching others better than me. But as part of a give back program for the Surfers Roadmap, I've started helping out some Groms from where I grew up when I can. A big part of this is in-depth coaching, but it's also about helping them adopt a learning mindset. This starts on the beach and in the car park as I encourage them to step into that mode. It can sometimes feel kooky practicing surf movements on the beach, but it helps me see if they're understanding the techniques that we're working on and almost more importantly, are willing to look a little silly if they have to. That right there is a big one for me. I remember, and I still think it's the case now, surfing is such a, um, it's a sport that attracts delicate egos, uh, particularly within the core surfing community. And I feel like it was always kind of frowned upon if you were uh, doing any coaching or, or, or learning, particularly outside the paradigm of, hey, this is approved coaching and this is not. So I think uh, when I was younger, I really wish that I was able to put aside ego a little bit more uh, and be open to exploring surfing uh, with, a, with, a, with a learning mindset, which I think would have stood me in good stead to soak up good pieces of information when they actually came, be it uh, very literally through a coach, which I didn't have access to, or through watching great surfers around me, which I definitely did have access to. didn't drop with it and you got hung up in the lip because you did get trapped up there. You didn't run away, drop away from the lip, you kind of just sat with it. From a technique point of view, we're talking about Mitch trying to send that back leg extension more vertically. So in a sort of 12 o'clock uh, direction as opposed to off on a horizontal angle. What that does, it enables the board to rebound off the lip and actually drive back under him uh, because ideally he's sort of hanging out uh, over the, the flats almost, over the face of the wave while his board goes and does that. Um, and that's also more broadly speaking gonna require a lot of trust in his technique, trust in the board that it's gonna come back down and that he can reconnect with it. Now we need to look at the idea of deliberate practice. This is something that's become quite a hot topic amongst the scientific learning community in the past sort of, um, well, for, for quite a long time. I would say it's been pinpointed as one of the key factors in determining extreme cases of success. And it's something that we as everyday people, and in this case as everyday surfers, can mimic. The idea of deliberate practice for me means approaching at least one or two surf sessions a week uh, with deliberate practice mode activated. So uh, put more tangibly, and for my students in the surfers roadmap or at uh, the pool on retreat or here uh, in this coaching session, we try and focus in on one or two major technique cues. So for instance, here with Mitch, we're talking about punching his leading arm uh, from the neutral position on the backhand down and across the body all the way to the pocket because we can see that he's not quite uh, getting there and extending out the back leg. So just having that very simple and digestible cue at the forefront of his mind throughout this session is a good way to approach it. What's the difference when you actually from here to here, you're well off the board and it's just a more vertical approach. Because you hung away from it and sent the board out to do the work for you, 
that's when the turn looks so much better. So much better. So that's good, that's progress. Uh, if we overload the surfer too much, then uh, we can just do that. We overload them, we cause anxiety, and there's no um, digestion of the information that we're trying to convey and the techniques that we're trying to implement. So it's really important to keep those deliberate practice sessions quite simple, or at least translate them into a simple message to keep at the forefront of your mind. Uh, and remember that you might be focused on that one thing for quite a while, which is how surfing is. You know, it takes a little while to progress because of the inconsistency in the in the playing field. Now, where that leads us to next is the intervention that uh, we are lucky enough to have access to nowadays, and it's the wave pool. When I was younger, I wish that I had access to the wave pool for uh, technique training and coaching purely because it allows for such a high degree of re repetition and repetitive training on the same canvas. I mean, we're literally getting some of my students when they come to the pool get some of them get 70 to 80 waves in one day uh, to practice these techniques on. Again, if you are going into that deliberate practice session or day, you may have four sessions throughout the day with two or three major technique cues in mind, chances are you're going to make significant progress on those technique attributes throughout that multitude of opportunities. I don't think wave pools are ever intended to or going to replace the experience in the ocean. And I think we're always gonna use pools as an intermediary for training for me uh, to step into the ocean and get better in the ocean and to enhance uh, my experience or our experience in the ocean. But they are a fantastic training intervention. And if you can get access to one, go for it. Watch your back arm here and see it go from in front of you to behind you yeah. really early. So what I want you to do is arrive at the top of the wave with your arm just going behind you. Yeah. So that's if you watch someone like Griffin Colapinto, as he's going down the wave, he makes sure that forearm is hovered over the wave until he's gone through the first half of that bottom turn yeah. arc. One of the key features of any sort of surf training that we can do, or most of the surf training that we do, is video analysis. And this just offers a impartial <laughs> feedback system that helps the surfer and the student, myself, <laughs> gain an understanding of the link between what something feels like and what it looks like, so what actually happens. And that's important because you're able to pick up little cues and sort of reverse engineer um, that kinesthetic awareness of what's happening on a wave. For instance, I'll look back at clips and see myself doing a cutback that I thought was good, and then I'll see my arm do something really not flattering or not aesthetically uh, pleasing. And then I'm able to go, okay, I remember what that felt like. And actually, yeah, I can remember my arm went up in that funny way. So I want to fix that. Uh, and the tighter we can get that turnaround, so the tighter we can get uh, the time, the, the smallest amount of time between the surface surfing that wave and then seeing footage of that wave, the better. So that's why I think this ongoing video analysis intervention is such a, a powerful tool to, to implement uh, training. It also can serve as a reinforcement technique for, for good learning, right? So if someone goes out, does a, does a cutback, and then we tweak that verbally, uh, you know, with some new inputs and, and some, some deliberate practice, and then they go out and they, they fix that or they optimize it, then we can show them straight away, like, hey, look, Here's what you were doing before, here's what you're doing now. And hopefully we reinforce the retention of the, of the learning that has taken place, you know, within the musculature, the nervous system, the brain, you know, all that stuff that, that, that's very hard to explain. Uh, we wanna try and reinforce that and encourage it for further development along, along the roadmap. And that's why video analysis is so helpful. 
Yes, look at that. Oh, and he's opening up as well. That's good. So much better. Yeah, so now we want that every single turn. Good job. The last one that I feel I, I did take advantage of is, is in a certain way is, is skating. Uh, I used to practice surfing on just a regular skateboard and it really helped me in regards to learning aerials because when we train for aerials, for instance, I'm riding the Advanced Surfers Roadmap at the moment and when we're training for aerials, we're going to be using regular skateboards. They're a lot easier to manage when we're doing you know, uh, that ollie sort of movement. But I also wish that I had access to a surf skate back then. I didn't actually know they existed until I kind of started this channel. And I think the ability once again to achieve high grade repetition and to achieve a, a very similar movement pattern, if not exactly the same on the skateboard as the surfboard, allows for some pretty effective training methods to take place. For instance, when we uh, train students we're setting up cones and we're re-approximating a line on a wave for instance a bottom turn top turn to a re-entry or whatever so that we can uh, practice that again and again and what that does it very subtly i think uh, is able to rewire the surfer to find new habits basically as they approach a wave and hopefully we're building in new optimal and helpful habits. For instance, uh, that can be as simple as getting lower on their bottom turn and, and that being the norm, as opposed to them reversing that scenario, which is quite common, being extended on the bottom turn and then compressing on the top turn. Just those little simple things can be worked on very easily and with a low barrier to entry, literally you don't have to get in the ocean and catch a wave which makes for a fantastic progression opportunity. So those are the things that I wish that I used when I was a younger surfer to progress. I'm lucky enough to have access to them all now, very regularly, and I do take quite a critique, uh, a critical eye over my own surfing as well as I shoot content for this channel and, and, and try and, and uh, teach others. It's been a very good way to learn. I could probably add that in as another really helpful tool. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, it, it's certainly a long journey as a surfer to progress to the level where you want to be. And I actually believe you never get there, you know, and that's the beauty of it. It's kind of like golf in that you never reach that handicap because when you do reach the one you previously wanted, you then go, oh, actually, I want to get to the next step. And, and that's just normal. And that's why it's a lifelong sport. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed that video, make sure you, you join us on retreat or in our online curriculums at thesurfersroadmap.com. You can also join me on Instagram at Kales Broccoli and the Surfers Roadmap at the Surfers Roadmap. I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys one day soon. Cheers.